Thank you. Good, so I hope you're having a great day so far and that you have a little bit more energy for one last uh, for today. So I'm going to tell you about product de development culture and how to make it more data-driven. And first, a bit more about who I am and why I'm talking to you. My name is Claire. I'm a senior data scientist at Spotify, and I'm working with the search team. And in the search team, my mission is to make search easier for a lot of users uh, using insights and data. And just to give you a bit context about how the teams are organized, because that's going to be easier to understand what I'm talking about, I'm a data scientist in a team of a few data scientists, between one and three, when we're lucky. And I'm working with between three and five different product teams working on different types of search, different part of search. And so I've worked also with other product teams before. And as a data scientist working with product, I really developed a passion about experimentation and how to use it to develop the product and how to make the product more data driven. But I also realized that as a data scientist, I can learn about experimentation. I, I can know everything there is to know about it. Not that I do, but I could. But I cannot make the product development data driven, right? Because I'm not developing the product. So I've been thinking about that a lot and how we can make the product data driven without actually doing all the steps that are required as data scientists. And so that's what I want to share with you today. Yes. So just to show you a bit what I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about in kind of general terms what a data-driven product de development culture is and what, it, what is hard about it. Then I will go into a bit of detail and share with you some key drivers to our success in my team at Spotify Search to develop our product in a data-driven way. And last, I will go even more into details and show you really like what the timeline looked like, just to have an idea and maybe get you a bit inspired. So let's talk about data-driven product development culture. And the reason why companies want to become data-driven is because it allows them to run fast, but also in the right direction. And it allows us to keep our own biases into check and make sure that we create a product that users like and not that we like as users. And in particular at Spotify, that's difficult. It also allows us to make every decision count and iterate even faster. And finally, to try even more disruptive ideas while managing the risk. And so when it comes to creating a product de development culture that is a pro developing a product in a data-driven way, there are a few ingredients that we need. And that's uh, by no means supposed to be the truth. It's just my observation in, in my own um, experience. But first, we need the ambition. We need to want to be data-driven and to build our product in that way. And most companies do. Most companies have the explicit ambition to be data-driven. Then we need tools, and we need best practices. And tools, a lot of companies have it. At Spotify, we have it. You heard about it a few talks ago. We have a, an experimentation platform that is quite complete and we can use to run experiments end to end. And a lot of companies have it, and there are also a lot of vendors that you can use. So having tools is not the blocker, let's say. And then we need best practices. And best practices is not super easy to find, but it's also quite easy on the internet and in communities like this. But the last ingredient that we need is a culture. And actually, the ambition and the culture are two different things. There is a difference between being able to experiment and even wanting to experiment and actually doing it and building the product using experimentation. So creating the culture is the hard part. And that's something that I observed in the three product teams that I work with. But apparently, it's not just a Spotify. There is um, a survey that is tracking the progress of corporate data initiative. And in this survey this year, only 27% of organizations reported that they have achieved that goal of becoming data-driven. And 92% of them are citing cultural obstacles 
as the biggest barrier to becoming data-driven. So it's not, it's not just at Spotify, and um, it is, yeah, creating a culture is, is difficult. And why is it so hard? And that again, it's a compilation of my observation, it's not a complete list, but in my experience, the first thing that is making creating a culture difficult is that a team is a diverse group of people. It's people with different disciplines, with different backgrounds, with different level of knowledge, with different level of interest also. And for that reason, creating a culture in a team means aligning those people around a value or something. And teams are already aligned on something, right? They are aligned on a product, they are aligned on a technology. But here we're talking about aligning different people on experimentation and using experimentation as in the development. So that's one more thing to align people on, and that's, that's difficult. And the, second, and the second obstacle that I observed is that whether we like it or not, experimenting is not the main focus of an engineering team. Their main focus is to build a great product. And so for this reason, they are competing priorities and they have to take care of tech debt or technical challenges. They also have uh, a product that, is, that they need to be delivered and they have OKRs and deadlines, all of those things that are coming, um, are competing with experimentation in their attention. And also creating new practices and including new practices in the product development process it requires to potentially change established ways of working. And that's also hard and uncomfortable. So for all of those reasons, creating the culture seems to be the hard part about creating a, development, a product development culture that is data-driven. And that's what I'm going to focus on. I'm going to focus on the culture part. So there will be nothing technical here, only, only, only culture. Uh, in product. So that brings me to the two key drivers to our success in the Spotify search team. And the first one is to have a realistic roadmap. Because when it comes to becoming data-driven, the road to the angle is, can be long and it can be intimidating. And that's why it's important to have a roadmap that is, that is allowing you to set the pace for this change, and also account for things like the team maturity and uh, maybe the, um, the bandwidth that they have at the moment. So you need to have a, um, a clear roadmap to make sure that you balance between too much too soon, and maybe teams are going to be, they, they're going to feel overwhelmed and, and they might give up, and too little to sell them. And then if you have some excitement, it might, uh, it might be lost. Yes. So what we have done in my team is that we created a clear roadmap in three steps, going from having, um, improving the quality of individual experiments and inside one team, to cross-experiment coordination and also cross-team coordination, which is adding a layer of difficulty, and finally, being able to measure the total business impact of everything that the different search team has been uh, developing over the course of one quarter. And then with those three steps, we have broken them down even more into smaller pieces that teams could take one by one and integrate into their flow in parallel. And the roadmap was there to make sure that combined together, all of those practices would raise the quality of our experimentation practices as a whole. So that's good. We need a roadmap, right? But then we need to execute on the roadmap. And like we said before, the roadmap will have to be broken down into pieces and it will have to be at a pace that makes sense for the team, which means that new practices will have to be continuously introduced to the team. And that is something that needs to be planned for, because that's going to take a while. For us, it took a year and four months so far, and counting. 
Um, so what we did, and here I'm going to be super concrete. We, okay, no, I'm going to be super fluffy first. We have created a safe space to communicate and evolve practices in. And now I'm going to be concrete. And concretely what it means is that we have created a place to communicate, and in our case it's a Slack channel, very concrete. We have created a Slack channel that is the place to communicate around experimentation in search. And we have uh, established a weekly meeting where, is, where we're talking about experimentation between the data science team and the engineering team to make sure that every time there is a new practice to introduce, we can introduce it, give training, also give announce, um, announcement from things coming from the platform, the experimentation platform at Spotify. It's growing and it's being built a lot. So there are a lot of announcements to come. And just to make sure that teams don't just like go to the platform and every day and then have a different experience. So like creating this, this communication like this. And the communication is also two ways. And that's very important to, for engineers to be able to give feedback on how the individual practices can be integrated in their flow. Because if they are not practical or convenient to integrate in the flow, they might be just drop. Because again, competing priorities, right? And if they drop and you don't have this safe communication space, you might not know about it. And then there is no real iteration. There is just blind spots in between. So that's the first important thing to think about when executing on the roadmap. And the second one is that improving practices will often mean that you will have more experiments, more and more experiments. And that's a great thing. But that also means that someone will have to be there to make sure that they, there is alignment between the different teams. And also to make sure that the team, individual teams, they can focus on adopting the, practice, the practices internally without having to care about what the others are doing. You can take care of that layer. So that was the first key driver, creating a clear roadmap. And the second key driver is to constantly inject your energy. And that's even more important. And that's going to help us to, to execute on the roadmap. Because building great experimentation is like starting a fire with wet wood. It's not going to start just because you provide a spark. It will take time. It will take a lot of energy. It will take continuous energy and care and the right resources to start burning and then burn by itself. And like we said, team have competing priorities, so you will maybe need to convince them and show them the value of experimenting and, and the value that's not that it brings to the product, but also that it can bring to the team. Experimenting can bring a lot of um, peace of mind to the team, uh, helping them uh, just like know that what you're doing is going well, that users are not screaming about it. And for this reason, you might have to do things for the team at the beginning. And that doesn't come for free. If you have to do small things to help the team, maybe analyze an experiment here and maybe choosing metrics there, that comes with a cost. And, and that's something that needs to be done um, continuously. And again, that's going to help you to uh, execute on the roadmap. And one last point about the injection of energy is that it's important to keep the motivation at the beginning because a lot of tests may not be perfect. And it's important to keep the motivation and keep, keep pushing and keep injecting your energy. And in case you run out of motivation, you can always override with discipline and keep doing it anyway. That works. So it's not going to be a sprint. It's going to be a marathon. It's going to be a long marathon. And it's also never really over. Because you will have people coming to the team. You have people leaving the team. You will have a reorg, which is things that happen in companies that are very agile, which is great. But then it's kind of raining on your fire. And so you need to keep, keep injecting the energy to keep it burning. But to end on a more positive note, and that's, that's the great news, um, what we have observed in, in, at Spotify after about six months of pushing and injecting energy is that 
some other people starting to inject their energy and people starting to help each other uh, to set up experiments and to analyze tests and to know what should be done. So it might scale faster than you think. And when I say faster, you want to see that it's not that fast, but it's a process. It's little by little. So now we'll go a bit more into detail about what we've done. And I'm not going to go through all of those steps. Uh, you can read more about it in the blog post on engineering at Spotify. But here I just want to show you, give you an idea of, what, of, how, of how it worked for us. And I'm just going to talk about what we've done in January and March, so during Q1 2021. That's the moment where we established those com communication channels. So this Slack channel and weekly meeting to talk about experimentation. The other thing that we've done is to set up templates for team to start with and also to be used as kind of the source of truth and like the place where all the information is. Because at, at Spotify, and it's probably uh, very specific to us, but uh, every experiment starts with a test specification, which is just a Google document. And we use that document to be the place where you have all the default information and all the latest practices, so that even people who have no idea how we do experimentation in search, who are new to the team, they at least start from a place where something is up to date. And that was a great place and a great setup for us to use and focus our injection of energy over the rest of the year. Because if you take an example of what we've done in December, improving the decision-making process, doesn't matter what it means, just one of the practices that we, that we introduced, what we did is that, okay, what is, the new what is the new process? That's the new process. We take one of those meetings, present it, update the templates, and then the team is good to go. And at this point, we also had those champions and like this array of people who were becoming passionate about experimentation and who took this information and shared it with the rest of the team. So it was really way more scalable after one year. And just in case you think that this is still quite long, you can always think that one year is going to go and the question is where are you going to be at the end? So just to summarize and small reflection um, on, the, on the whole journey, when, when we first started I really personally believed that a culture could only change if the incentive and expectation from the leadership change. And that it's not really something that we can make happen. And I was wrong. That's not what happened. And in the end, what happened is that with injection of energy and, and following up with the team and helping every day for a year, um, it really changed the culture of the team from the inside. And so one last, one last slide uh, for just summarizing the key, key measures. First is to create a roadmap and breaking down into small pieces that you can really build on top. Start by doing things for the team rather than letting them do it so that they can see the value and see that it's worth it and see if they, if they want to continue and hopefully they will. Then create a safe space for team to evolve their practices in. And finally, and I can not possibly stress that enough, continuously, continuously inject your energy and support. So keep calm and inject energy. Thank you. Thank you. So I will squeeze in one of my own questions first. So <clears throat> why is just experimentation culture or being data-driven so difficult? What were the most common complaints from the organization? I think it's, it, that's the hard part, actually. It's not really complaints. It's not like people are saying, like, no, we don't want to experiment because those reasons. It's we want to experiment, but then we just don't do it because then there's this and there's that and then we forgot because it's not integrated. So I think 